provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. The agenda is adopted. Before each of you is a list of member states, observer states, and individuals who would participate in this meeting in accordance with Rules 37 and 39 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, as well as the previous practice of the Council in this regard. We propose that they be invited to participate in this meeting. There being no objection, it is so decided. Security Council will now begin its consideration of Item 2 of the agenda. I wish to draw the attention of Council members to document S-2017-305, a letter dated 10 April 2017 from my delegation addressed to the Secretary General, transmitting a concept paper on the item under consideration. I want to welcome um, Mr. Nikolai Mladenov, and we look forward to your briefing. Good morning. Madam President, members of the Security Council, thank you for this opportunity to again address the Council on the situation in the Middle East, including the Palestinian question. I took note of the Presidency's interest this month in discussing a number of issues pertaining to the Middle East and North Africa region. I will therefore highlight some of them in my presentation and defer to my fellow UN envoys who regularly brief the Council for greater detail on many of these challenges. Madam President, Developments in the Arab-Israeli conflict continue to resonate across the region. The question of Palestine remains a potent symbol and rallying cry that is easily misappropriated and exploited by extremist groups. Ending the occupation and realizing a two-state solution will not solve all of the region's problems, but as long as the conflict persists, it will continue to feed them. Sporadic violence has continued in recent weeks as five Palestinians and one Israeli were killed in various acts of violence. Among the fatalities were two Palestinian teenage boys shot by Israeli security forces outside of Ramallah, as well as a British woman who was murdered by a Palestinian man in Jerusalem. In March, Israel approved the establishment of a new settlement and declared some 240 acres of state land inside the occupied Palestinian territory. These moves further undermine the territorial contiguity of a future Palestinian state in the West Bank. Tenders for close to 2,000 housing units, the vast majority in major population centers close to the 1967 lines, were also issued. I take note of recent reports that Israel has adopted a policy of restraint by which construction will be advanced, quote, almost in exclusively, end quote, in the buildup areas of settlements, but it is too early to determine how this policy will manifest itself on the ground. Madam President, the Security Council has a role and responsibility to foster such a just and peaceful solution, consistent with its charter mandate. Resolution 2334 of 2016 is the most recent articulation of the Council's positions, decisions, and determination in this regard, and reflects the long-standing international consensus on this issue. We reiterate, Resolution 2334 is not anti-Israel, and I repeat, it is not anti-Israel. It is anti-settlements, anti-violence, anti-violation of international law, and is thus actually and clearly pro-peace and pro-two-state solution, Palestine and Israel, and was globally welcomed as such. The resolution provides the most viable path to preserve the two-state solution on the 1967 lines and create the necessary conditions to end the occupation, justly resolve the conflict in all aspects, and make Palestinian-Israeli peace and security a reality. When it comes to the Middle East, the Security Council is stuck repeating the same statements instead of seeking new ways forward to bring stability to our part of the world. The truth is that in a region filled with brutal dictatorships and an endless disregard for civil rights and human lives, Israel remains the one beacon of hope. We remain the one true democracy in our region and the one country where people are truly free without regards to their race, religion, gender, 
or sexual orientation. Quite simply, Israel is a true partner in the fight against terrorism and for those seeking positive change in the Middle East. Every month, the Security Council convenes a meeting on the Middle East. We have lots of meetings on specific countries and conflicts in this region. But this debate is our opportunity to talk about the Middle East as a whole. This is our opportunity to look at the threats that go beyond one country's borders, the threats that affect not just every country in the Middle East, but all too often, every single one of us. Regrettably, these monthly meetings routinely turn into Israel bashing sessions. That's the way this Security Council has operated for years. It's a formula that is absurdly biased against one country. It's a formula that is painfully narrow in its description of the conflicts in the region. And it's a formula that does nothing to help find solutions. The truth is, these Security Council meetings don't do anyone in the region any favors, least of all the Israelis and the Palestinians. These meetings do nothing to bring the parties closer together. They actually work to push the two sides apart. The United States firmly believes that peace is possible between Israel and the Palestinians, and we are actively working toward that goal. Peace will only come from direct negotiations, not from one-sided Security Council meetings and one-sided resolutions. These biased discussions on the Middle East also impose a real cost. Threats are evolving and do not fit neatly within borders. By limiting itself, the Council ignores the pressing threats that are right in front of us. 